So what are some stars that could potentially explode very close to planet Earth in the next few million years? In other words, what are some stars that will produce beautiful supernova? Hello wonderful person, today we're going to explore three such stars. Some of them you may already know, some of them you may have never heard of before. I'm going to tell you when they most likely will explode and what they actually do to our planet. On the other hand, you should also watch the other video I'm going to be releasing uh, tomorrow that talks a little bit more about the actual effects of supernova on our planet. Anyway, welcome to the math. So let's start with the first and I guess the most well-known star, Betelgeuse. This wonderful giant is, well, gigantic. It's really, really, really big. It's huge in comparison to our sun. If we were to place this particular star in our own solar system, um, it would most likely cover everything up to Mars and even a little bit farther up to about, I guess, asteroid belt. Now, uh, this particular star is actually not very old. It's only about 2 million years old, but because it's so massive, um, it kind of lived through its life very quickly and it's approaching its end times. This is why it's so large and this is actually why it's going to explode anywhere from, I guess, tomorrow although more likely in the next few thousands or um, maybe million years from now. When it explodes, um, and this is actually a hypothetical scenario with our planet Earth right next to it, it's going to produce what's known as a type 2 supernova that's uh, going to create a flash that's going to be so bright that um, it will resemble uh, moon in a sense. Hypothetically speaking, it's kind of going to look like this for approximately a few months. Now, chances are none of us are going to be around to see this, but if it does happen tomorrow, that's what you're going to witness. And like I'm going to mention in the video tomorrow, you're going to find out what actually happens to our planet when this occurs. But just a kind of a spoiler, don't worry, nothing serious. Now, the explosion itself is not going to produce any gamma rays, it's also very unlikely to produce any serious X-rays, so in that sense, um, we're pretty safe from its um, actual actions. Uh, but it will actually leave behind a neutron star. Now, that is another story, because a neutron star can potentially be a magnetar, and there's a video that's coming out really soon where I'm going to explain how magnetars can actually cause some serious trouble for our planet. But let's not rush into things. Now, because this star is actually kind of far away from us, it's about 640 light years away from our planet Earth, um, we basically are going to essentially witness what happened about 640 years ago. And so, in some sense, for all we know, currently, like right now, it could already have exploded. There could already be a neutron star here, but we just don't really see it yet. On the other hand, because of the distance, once again, there's really nothing to worry about. It's really pretty far away from us. So it's going to leave a very beautiful light show. It's going to basically brighten our night skies and you might even be able to read the book at night. Um, assuming, of course, it happens when we're still around and when the books are still around. But like I said, other than that, there's nothing to worry about. Let's go to the next star. So this one you might not be actually familiar with, or you may be, but you might have not known that it's going to go supernova. And this right here is the Antares system. There are actually two stars here. There is Antares A, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds. It's actually a very, very massive star, about 10 times the mass of our own uh, sun. And there is its partner, Antares B, which is even more massive, but also actually a gigantic star as well, very similar to Betelgeuse. So in this particular case, um, we expect that the much larger Antares uh, giant star will probably go type 2 supernova and create a relatively large explosion, very, very similar to the one I just showed you from Betelgeuse, also creating just as much brightness. Now, here's actually Antares in comparison to our own sun, which is actually barely even visible. That's how tiny our sun is in terms of the actual size. And so once this star actually does explode, you can imagine it's going to create a lot and a lot of energy. It's actually going to create such a bright flash and so uh, much energy is going to be released that um, we could once again read books. But the thing about Antares is that it's um, actually scheduled to go supernova probably before Betelgeuse. So within about next 10,000 years from today. And so this may actually be the first supernova we witness, and it's even closer than Betelgeuse at a distance of just over 500 light years. So this will probably happen first. 
And now let's go to the last uh, supernova or the last star that's going to go supernova, but the star that is not as well known. And this is a system known as IK Pegasi. And the type of a supernova here is going to be different. It's going to be type 1 supernova because once again we have two stars here and I'm going to come closer to them so you can actually see. We have a very large giant Pegasi A that actually is losing a lot of its mass because its partner Pegasi B is collecting it slowly and it's eating it up. And Pegasi B just happens to be this star right here which is a much smaller object known as a white dwarf. Now I've talked about white dwarfs before and you may already know that once a white dwarf reaches a certain limit of mass, specifically about 1.4 masses of the sun, right now it's only about 1.16, it actually um, goes supernova, it cannot handle so much mass so it basically explodes and the entire mass of the star is uh, transformed into pure energy. It literally creates such a huge explosion and this explosion happens so suddenly that um, it can potentially be dangerous. And because this star is currently relatively close to us, at least in comparison to other stars, it's only at a distance of about 150 light years, there is a slight chance it might cause something. It might do something to our planet, but once again, by the time that it does explode, um, it actually is going to be much farther away. It's currently moving away from us, and we think it might go supernova within about 5 uh, million years from now. So anywhere from a few thousand, a few hundred thousand, that is, to maybe maximum 5 million years from now, it will reach this limit and it will probably go supernova and create a very large explosion. And in many cases, a type 1 supernova is actually a lot more dangerous than the type 2 supernova. So if hypothetically IK Pegasi goes supernova relatively soon, we actually may need to worry just a little bit, but not a lot. As a matter of fact, in the video tomorrow you'll find out why you really shouldn't worry about this kind of stuff. But nevertheless though, this particular supernova is going to be the brightest and the most powerful when it does occur. So if it happens in the next few, few hundred thousand years, it's going to be much brighter than the one I just showed you, but it's only going to last for a few days, it's going to be very, very quick. However, if it happens 5 million years from now, this star is actually going to be really far away from us. It's moving fast enough that it's most likely going to be at a distance where it might actually still look very beautiful, but not as bright as the one from Betelgeuse or the one from Antares. And so in that sense, even though there are actually three stars that we're certain are going to go supernova in the next few million years, we have nothing to worry about, which is something I'll explain tomorrow. And uh, we actually may even be lucky enough to see one of these supernova happen in the next few uh, thousand or so years. And hopefully some of us, maybe your ancestors or maybe even us, will be able to see it at night and even use the light from the supernova to basically read books. But then again, who still reads books? Do people even read books outside? I don't think they do. I think most people nowadays have either a Kindle or rely on movies or other entertainment. Anyway, if you do still read books, and if it happens and you actually get to see this beautiful creation in the night sky, maybe consider reading a book outside. Anyway, on that cheesy note, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope uh, you learned something from it about the stars that are going to go supernova relatively soon in astronomical terms. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow in a video where I'm going to explain a little bit more about the effects of supernova on our planet. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.